In this video, I'll teach you how to do rolling wave planning in Microsoft Project. Many years ago, I worked with a corporate client that needed to do rolling wave planning. What they needed to do was to completely plan the first phase of the project and only skeleton plan the other remaining phases. While I was working with them, I taught them a methodology of how to do rolling wave planning to meet this interesting planning need. I'll teach you how to do that today as well. So let's get started. Okay, so here's a project that is ready for rolling wave planning. Notice that I've completely planned all of the tasks in Phase 1, but in Phase 2 through Phase 5, I have only included a dummy name task that will serve as a placeholder task for future tasks in that section of the project. At this point, I'm ready to save a baseline for all of the tasks in Phase 1 only. Before I do that, let's go ahead and look at the baseline table. So I'll right-click on the Select All button and choose More Tables on the shortcut menu. In the More Tables dialog, I'll select the baseline table and then click the Apply button. Let's go ahead and drag the split bar over to the right edge of the baseline cost column. To baseline only the tasks in Phase 1, here's what I'll do. I'll highlight Phase 1 through Phase 1 Complete. Then I'll click the Project tab to display the project ribbon. I'll click the Set Baseline, Pick List button, and choose Set Baseline. In the Set Baseline dialog, I'll leave the Set Baseline option selected. I'll leave the Baseline Set of Fields selected. But in the bottom of the dialog, I'll choose the option Selected Tasks, and I'll select the checkbox To All Summary Tasks. We'll roll up this information to row zero. When I click the OK button, notice now that all of the tasks in Phase 1 are baselined. At this point, I'm ready to begin entering progress in Phase 1 and then to begin completely planning the Phase 2 section of the project. Let's fast forward now into the future. Please notice that the current date is Wednesday, February the 12th, indicated by the thin green grid line in the Gantt chart screen. Notice that the status date was set as Friday, February the 7th, as indicated by this red dashed line in the Gantt chart screen. Also, please notice that all of the tasks in Phase 1 have been completed. Notice also that all of the tasks in Phase 2 are now completely planned, including having resources assigned to them. At this point, I'm ready to baseline Phase 2 and then begin work in this section of the project. Before I do that, however, Let's go ahead and take a look at work variants in this project. I'll right click on Select All and choose the work table on the shortcut menu. Let's go ahead and drag the split bar over to the right edge of the percent work complete column. Please notice that in this project currently there are 352 hours of work variants for the entire project. There are 56 hours of work variance from Phase 1. That variance is from the 32 hours of work variance on Build 1, which went over its budget on work, and the 24 hours of work variance on Implement 1, which went 24 hours over its budget on work. 
Notice that all of the other variance, 296 hours, comes from the Phase 2 section, which includes all these new tasks that have not yet been baselined. So I'm ready to baseline the Phase 2 tasks. Here's how I'll do it. Once again, I'll select all of the tasks in Phase 2. I'll click the Project tab to display the project ribbon. I'll click the Set Baseline Pick List button, and I'll choose Set Baseline on the menu. In the Set Baseline dialog, I'll leave the Set Baseline item selected, I'll leave the baseline set of fields selected. This is important because that must be the operating baseline for the entire life of the project. But in the bottom half, I'll choose the option Selected Tasks, and I'll choose the option To All Summary Tasks, which will roll up these baseline values to row zero. When I click the OK button this time, Microsoft Project is going to complain. It claims I'm going to overwrite the baseline data. Well, no, that's too extreme. I'm not going to overwrite the data in the baseline. I'm going to append the current baseline with the information from Phase 2. When I click the Yes button, notice the following. There's no variance from Phase 2. The original 56 hours of work variance for Phase 1 are still present. There's the 32 hours on Build 1. Here's the 24 hours on Implement 1. At this point, I'm now ready to begin work on the Phase 2 section of the project and then I'll begin completely planning Phase 3. Let's do that one more time just to make sure you get how to do rolling wave planning. Now let's jump ahead again in time. Today is Wednesday, March the 19th, as indicated by the green grid line in the Gantt chart screen. The status date was set to last Friday, March the 14th, as indicated by this red dashed grid line in the Gantt chart screen. Notice also that all of the Phase 2 tasks have been completed, and all of the tasks in Phase 3 are now completely planned with resources assigned to each of the tasks. I'm now ready to baseline the Phase 3 tasks. Before we do this, once again, let's go to the Work table. And let's take a peek at Work Variants for this project. Notice that currently there is 960 hours of Work Variants for the entire project. 56 hours of variance are historical variance from Phase 1 in the project. 112 hours represent historical variance from Phase 2 of the project. The remaining 792 hours are present only because these are the new tasks that were added in the Phase 3 section of the project. So at this point, I'm ready to baseline Phase 3, but again, I do not want to lose the historical variance from Phase 1 or Phase 2. So here's how to do that. Again, I'll highlight all of the tasks in Phase 3, I'll click the Project tab to display the Project Ribbon. I'll click the Set Baseline Pick List button and choose Set Baseline. In the Set Baseline dialog, I'll leave the option Set Baseline selected. I'll leave the Baseline Set of Fields selected. Remember that that must be the operating baseline for the entire life of the project. Once again, I'll choose the item called Selected Tasks, 
and I'll leave the checkbox selected called To All Summary Tasks so that rolls up the baseline information phase three into the project summary task. When I click the OK button, Microsoft Project will once again complain that I'm overriding the data in the baseline. Remember, I'm not overriding it. I'm appending the information from phase three into the overall baseline for the entire project. When I click the Yes button, please notice the following. I have not lost the 56 hours of historical variance on phase one. I have not lost the 112 hours of historical variance on phase two, but all of the variance on phase three has now disappeared because all of these tasks have now been baseline. But wait, there's a little more I want to show you. If I click the Task tab to go back to the Task ribbon and click the Gantt Chart Pick List button, I'd like to take a look at the Tracking Gantt view for this project to see how we are doing on the schedule. Here's what I can see. In Phase 1, I can see that this task slipped and I can see that this task slipped further. The middle task was already slipping some because build one slipped, therefore test one slipped, implement one slipped. Then I can see further in phase two, there's slippage as well. All of these tasks are dark blue because they represent completed tasks. They are no longer on the critical path. And in phase three, I can see all of these tasks have red Gantt bars representing critical tasks in the project. So this is how to do rolling wave planning. All I would need to do further is to begin work in phase three, completely plan phase four, then baseline phase four, begin work in phase four, completely plan phase five, and so forth. My friends, that's how to do rolling wave planning in Microsoft Project. Now you know how to do rolling wave planning in Microsoft Project. If you need it, go ahead and use what I've taught you. As always, I sure hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification button. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.